Before you watch this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Social Management TV and do not forget to press the notification button and to get more information. Good day everyone, here is the latest Tazing News. Still with me, Vanessa. Manila extends lockdown to reduce Delta variant transmission in the country. The Manila capital region begin a third COVID-19 lockdown in a bid to contain the spread of the Delta coronavirus variant. Authorities have deployed police personnel to quarantine checkpoints in the capital region where inbound and outbound travel will be restricted. Meanwhile, local businesses operator says they were worried about a lack of income with public movement restricted. Jerry Brinosa, a tricycle driver, says only a few people are allowed to go out how they are going to earn an income. Infections in the Philippines exceeded 8,000 a day in the past week. The recorded tally of 8,735 infections on August 1st was the highest since May 28. With around 1.6 million COVID-19 cases and more than 28,000 deaths, the Philippines has the second worst coronavirus outbreak in the Southeast Asia after Indonesia. Police of Thailand detained suspect for Swiss tourist dead. Thai police says that a man had been taken into custody for the death of a Swiss tourist on the island of Phuket earlier this week. Police chief Sua Jang Yutsuk tells reporters in Phuket that the suspect had been detained but did not give further details when responding to questions from reporters. Official says the body of a 57-year-old Swiss tourist was found near a waterfall in Resort Island with signs she had died of unnatural causes. The woman arrived on island on July 13 under the Phuket Sandbox Scheme, a pilot project to allow in vaccinated foreign tourists to help revive a sector that decimated by the COVID-19 to help revive a sector that decimated by the COVID-19 pandemic. The suspect is a 27-year-old native of Phuket, two police sources told Reuters. A news conference with more details of the investigation is scheduled. Thailand anti-government protesters throw petrol bombs in clashes with police. Protesters threw petrol bombs at the riot police in Bangkok after Thailand authorities detained 11 leaders of demonstrations against the government's handling of the coronavirus pandemic. Hundreds of police are deployed into the streets ahead of the protest, which is supposed to involve a convoy of cars congregating in the center of Bangkok. Protest leaders who had spent time in jail over previous demonstration and been released on bail have gone back into custody in recent days as police warned that all public gatherings were currently illegal under the COVID-19 emergency. They have vowed to take actions against anyone taking part in protest. Thailand's youth-led protest movement have been regaining momentum amid growing public anger about Prime Minister Prayut Chang Ocha's handling of the country's worst wave of COVID-19 infections, with the economy taking a new battering. Demonstrations last year attracted hundreds of thousands of people before a crackdown by authorities. Hospitals have been pushed to the brink by the latest wave of COVID-19 cases, and Thailand reported a record COVID-19 death toll of 235. Philippine scholars urge WHO to investigate the United States for the trick laboratory for the global origins of COVID-19. Scholars in the Philippines launches an online petition to collect enough signatures to urge the World Health Organization to investigate the fourth Detrick Lab, a top United States bioweapon research base for global COVID-19 origins. 
Herman Laurel, one of the petition's initiators and a prominent political commentator in the Philippines, says the Fort Detrick lab remains a mystery. As signs have shown, the lab is very dangerous after its closure in August 2019 and the later mysterious e-cigarette pneumonia in the United States. So it is imperative now for WHO to take action on this. Uh, but maybe I can also add, we are aware from uh, reading all the reports from many uh, sources, many countries, that there is pressure being exerted on WHO to focus on just one, one country, which is, which is not logical because uh, the uh, coronavirus, as uh, we have explained, seems to have several uh, origins that need to be investigated still. Laurel affirms the petition began on August 4 will be considered valid if more than 100 signatures are collected. They are expected to collect 1,000 signatures in a short period of time. On the same forum, Adolfo Paglinawan, another initiator of the petition, released his new book, No Vaccine for a Virus Called Racism. In the Philippine Embassy to the United States, Paglinawan recalled in his book the racial discrimination against Asians, including Chinese, due to political factors since the pandemic outbreak. Paglinawan says that politicizing the COVID-19 pandemic is in itself a kind of discrimination, stressing that it is science, no politic that is needed to respond to the virus and the pandemic. The United Nations envoy on Myanmar says Myanmar junta leaders aims to solidify grip on power. The situation in Myanmar is still very... The United Nations special envoy on Myanmar says the country's military leader appears determined to solidify his grip on power following a February coup and ousted leader Aung San Suu Kyi's political party could soon be disbanded. Christine schreiner burgener cited military ruler Ming Ohleng's announcement this month that he was now prime minister in a newly formed caretaker government and also a formal annulment of the results of a November election which was won by Suu Kyi's National League for Democracy. And I fear that we will soon hear also that the NLD party could be disbanded. This is an attempt to promote legitimacy against lack of international action taken. And I have to make clear that the UN does not recognize government, so it's up to the member states. She says unless United Nations member states act, Myanmar's United Nations ambassador, Kiao Mayotun, an opponent of the junta, remains the country's legitimate envoy at the World Body in New York, and Suu Kyi and Myanmar President Win Mint are the country's leaders. The junta, which argues that it is not a military government and came about through a constitutional transfer of power, has said it wants to appoint Aung Train, a member of Myanmar's military from 1995 to 2021, to be the United Nations ambassador. United Nations credentials are initially considered by a nine-member committee appointed at the beginning of each annual session of the 193-member General Assembly, which starts in September. Meanwhile, schreiner burgener stresses that it was up to the member states to decide who should represent Myanmar. The United Nations has previously had to address competing claims for representation, some culminating with a vote in the General Assembly. The Credentials Committee is also able to defer a decision and leave a seat empty. Heavy rain caused flooding in Hiroshima and Kumamoto prefectures in Japan. Torrential rains hit parts of southern Japan, which prompted the Japan Meteorological Agency to issue its highest risk alert in Hiroshima Prefecture, citing unprecedented rains in the region and imminent risk of floods and other disasters. Video obtained by Reuters shows a heavily flooded street and drain in Hiroshima Prefecture while flood waters rushed out of a dam in Kumamoto Prefecture. According to the agency, the risk alerts have since been downgraded, but Hiroshima Prefecture and parts of the southern island of Kyushu continue to be under a landslide and flood warning. The Japan Meteorological Agency in a statement says that the rain front could stay over the country for a week. Japanese Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga's office set up a disaster control center to handle potential disasters. South Korea adopts electronic travel authorization system for visitors to a safe infectious disease. South Korea is implementing for the first time an electronic travel authorization system for overseas visitors from September as the COVID-19 pandemic forces open the way for a policy previously opposed by the country's tourism industry. 
The Justice Ministry says the system will be a long-term way to preemptively head off any contagious disease as well as limit the number of undocumented immigrants which had risen in the years before the pandemic. Most visa waivers were suspended as the pandemic worsened in April 2020. When border control eased the ETA system to help prevent the entry of infectious disease to the country by requiring travelers to share their previous two weeks of travel history. Justice Minister Park Byung Kye tells Reuters in an interview it will also enable a prompt entry ban on a certain country and when a contagious outbreak occurs. Park explains a pilot program has been in place since May and the full system will be implemented on September 1st. South Korea will be the fifth country to adopt the ETA, an automated system used to identify in advance the eligibility of visitors to enter the country without a visa. At least 21 people dead and four others are missing due to flooding in Hubei province. According to the preliminary investigation, the heavy downpour affected more than 8,000 residents, damaged more than 2,700 houses and shops, of which 221 collapsed, destroyed 11.3 kilometers of roads, 63 bridges and 725 power communications poles, and interrupted power and communication in the township while the rescue workers is underway in the country. Chinese Ministry of Emergency Management sends a team to Hubei province to facilitate the rescue since the rainstorms caused blackouts, disrupted communications and stranded people in parts of the province. The ministry adds most severely hit regions including Sichuan, Xiangyang and Xiaogan in Hubei. And the province's fire and rescue department dispatched 173 professional members and 13 boats to aid the regions. Heavy downpours affected more than 100,000 residents since August 8, and the latest spell of torrential rains have triggered multiple natural disasters such as flooding and hailstorms. He will dispatches five water rescue teams with 173 commanders and 13 boats to carry out rescue operations. According to the Hubei Meteorological Service, torrential rains are expected to persist and may cause flooding and other geological disasters. The China National Commission for Disaster Reduction and the Ministry of Emergency Management jointly activated a level 4 emergency response to the floods. China's fourth high flood control emergency response system, with level 1 being most the severe. Pakistani government says the attack that killed nine Chinese workers was a suicide bombing. Pakistani Foreign Minister Shah Mehmood Qurashi says a bus attacked last month that killed nine Chinese workers was a suicide bombing carried out by Islamist militants backed by Indian and Afghan intelligence agencies. The minister adds, an investigation shows there was an excess of India's role and Afghanistan's NDS in the attack, referring to the country's intelligence agencies. The blast hit a bus carrying the Chinese workers on their way to a dam construction site in northern Pakistan. Qureshi uh, uh, addressing a news conference in Islamabad together with the top investigator says Pakistan had data evidence to back the allegation that the intelligence agencies from the two neighbors were involved. Officials from the Indian and Afghan foreign ministers could not immediately be reached for comment. Senior investigator tells reporters around 100 to 120 kilograms of high explosives were used in the car bombing, adding that forensic examination of the suicide bombers remains show he is not a Pakistani national. Cell phone data analysis, investigation of local handlers and facilitators, and forensic examination of the car used in the bombing all revealed that the TTP in Afghanistan had planned this attack. He also alleges that the perpetrators got all their directions and all their facilitation from senior officials of RO and NDS. Mavia. 
Pakistan and India are long-time archer rivals and frequently trade accusations which both sides deny that the other country is behind attacks. Pakistan originally blamed a mechanical failure for the blast but later said traces of explosives were detected and that it could not rule out an attack. Meanwhile, Chinese Premier Le Qixiang urged his Pakistani counterpart last month to hold accountable the culprits in what he called a terrorist attack. Chinese investigators have been involved in the probe. Qureshi adds, some elements are out to hurt the two countries' interest. Beijing is investing over $65 billion in infrastructure projects in Pakistan as part of the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor under its wider Belt and Road Initiative. Robots deliver food and give hope to patients with COVID-19 who are isolated at village in Surabaya. The robot was designed with the help of a group of Indonesian university professors to entertain a village. A homemade robot found a new use during the pandemic, bringing food and hopefully a smile for residents who isolated themselves and contracted COVID-19. The robot was renamed the Delta Robot by the project team after the highly contagious variant of the coronavirus that has ripped through Indonesia and assemblies from eclectic household items such as old pots, pans and television monitors. The robot's head made from a rice cooker, it is operated by remote control and its battery should allow for 12 hours of operation. It has also been modified to spray disinfectant to stop the spread of the virus. The village where the robot operates in Surabaya, which is the capital of East Java province and Indonesia's second biggest city Surabaya, has been swept up by a devastating second wave of coronavirus infections in the past month. Indonesia has become the epicenter of Asia's COVID-19 outbreak and recorded more than 3.68 million infections and over 108,000 deaths from the virus. Indonesia extended COVID-19 curbs on populous Java and Bali Island but will ease them in 26 areas where new infections are decreasing. Well, that's the wrap-up everyone. Stay safe and stay healthy.